Well, our conversations continue here in Davos. We're coming to you live from the Infosys Lounge. Uh, uh, the theme here is towards purposeful AI. And joining us, of course, is the man who's been advocating that for a while, Vishal Sikha. Vishal, thanks very much for joining us. Good on to be CBC here with you, Dave. Welcome to our little well, joint here. Th thank you very much for having us here. Let me start by asking you, this is the mecca of networking, Vishal. Vishal, how many existing clients, potential customers have you reached out to? What is the sense that you get about being able to convert all of that? Uh, into possible deals. It, it is a blur. In the last two full days, uh, um, I have already met more than 200 clients. Um, mostly, uh, I would say 60% are existing and 40% are new. Um, Sandeep was telling me that he has 38 one-on-one -on -one meetings in these three days. So it is an extraordinary opportunity to meet with people and also just serendipitously meet with people. and. Uh, talk business mm. and strategy and so forth. So if you're talking business and strategy, what is the mood looking like at this point in time? Uh, tomorrow we're going to see uh, uh, President Trump in the White House. Uh, is there now a sense that perhaps people are going to start to spend again? The decision making that was put on hold is now going to be back online, on stream. What is the sense that you get in terms of mood? I think the, the, there is a sense of, uh, of uh, anxiety, of uncertainty. There is a sense of um, we have been, uh, as a collectively as businesses, have been very successful and uh, the co consequences of that success are something that people are really thinking hard about in light of what has happened in the last 12 months. The um, uh, including more people into the success, mm. um, making the success more broad based, mm. addressing stakeholders beyond just you know shareholders and customers but also thinking more broadly mm. about the communities we serve the ecosystems we serve and so on so those are some of the things not only being discussed in the world economic forum but also just that genuinely on mm. on people's mind you know when ai uh, the it is very clear that a lot of the jobs of the past are going to be displaced by ai so people are genuinely thinking about what does it mean to reskill people mm -hmm. and bringing in larger collections of people into the workforce of tomorrow mm -hmm. as a result of better skilling and training and so mm -hmm. forth. So. But if I were to just uh, talk in terms of business, uh, do you believe that FI18 is going to look better than FI17? Because in FI17, not just for you, but uh, industry as a whole, growth has slowed down significantly. The, uh, it is true that uh, the growth has slowed down significantly, but uh, you know I am an optimist. I, I am in. Um, I believe that us at Infosys, as well as broadly, um, are facing some tremendous opportunities mm. created by technology, created by AI in the times ahead. Even the the policy changes and so forth uh, that people anticipate, not only in the U.S. but elsewhere in the world, are all happening within the broader context of these deep-rooted uh, technological change that is going on around us. So therefore, as a software company, as a technology company, if we are able to uh, adapt and, and gear ourselves up to serve customers in these times, mm. uh, my sense is that we'll be okay. Mm. The, um, uh, but as you said, there are near-term uncertainties that uh, you know that can have an impact on on growth and so forth, and that depends a lot on as we get more visibility, we have to understand what that means for us and mm. so forth. Mm. So, uh, being more specific about it over a three-month or a one-year horizon is something that that you have to be very you have to be very thoughtful about. Mm. Uh, we are going through that exercise right now for the year that is coming up for us. In the course of the next several weeks, we will do that exercise. Uh, but generally, my sense is that uh, if you just compare ourselves to last year, mm. the rate of technological change has, has even has accelerated further. Mm. Uh, the impact of these technologies has become even more uh, marked and more clear. Mm. Uh, so therefore, if we continue to deliver in these times, we'll be okay. Mm. But you know, from a 13.5% kind of growth rate down to about an 8, 8.5% kind of growth rate, uh, given the fact that there is near-term uncertainty uh, and perhaps near-term volatility as well as far as deals, etc., are concerned, whether it's Europe or the, yeah. uh, or the US, you know, is, is that kind of growth rate, uh, you know, what you're going to have to make peace with? The, um, uh, I don't know yet. If you just um, uh, wait until April, we will know more by that time, uh, more precisely. The, um, but generally my sense is, I mean, 8, and, eight to 9 percent, 10 percent, 11 percent, these kinds of numbers uh, in these times are, are still quite, um, you know, quite impressive. Mm. The, uh, uh, but near-term impact of the existing business and the deal situations and the client situations is one thing. Mm. The broader atmosphere uh, is another one where, I mean, all my meetings with clients 
uh, you find that there is a deep need for understanding the role of AI, mm. the impact of AI, I mean, uh, risk, fraud, um, money laundering in banks, uh, understanding complex contractual and policy obligations, uh, the new autonomous driving technologies, mm. uh, autonomous machine technologies, uh, the ways in which uh, AI and digital and all these technologies can be brought together mm. uh, to really rethink the, mm. the uh, many of the applications, like you see the digital twin of an airplane engine here and how the life cycle can be dramatically shortened, mm. uh, how retail experience, customer service experience can be dramatically improved. These are such amazing and valuable applications that uh, uh, I think that the opportunities are tremendous mm. that are in front of us. You know, we've been focusing a lot on the U.S., but let me also ask you about the U.K., because that was the pain point specifically for you with the RBS deal. Yes. And now with the Prime Minister, in a sense, indicating that it's likely to be what is being seen as a hard Brexit, saying that, you know, we're, we're not really going to seek even a unified single market and so on and so forth. Uh, do you see more pain or the potential for more pain, uh, specifically at least as far as the U.K. is concerned? I see the potential for pain as well as the potential for gain. Um, see, you know, if tariffs are introduced, somebody has to calculate the tariffs. So my point is that even uh, policy changes require work, and that work is, has to be done by somebody. Mm. Why not by us? And the second point is that all that work that is happening is happening in the broader context of the technological shift. So I think both the governments, if you look at the U.S. and the U.K., I fully expect that these are very business-friendly governments, very technology and innovation-friendly governments, entrepreneurship-friendly governments. So as long as we can focus on, on mm. that, on mm. differentiating on that, mm. we'll be fine. So, you know, in, in term, you said that you will have more visibility and clarity on what the year ahead looks like in April. Yes. But if I were to ask you about some of the key levers that you would like to exercise during the course of 2017, or, or some of the milestones that you hope to internally achieve, uh, what would those be? Innovation, innovation, innovation. <laughs> and better execution, execution, execution. Huh. That's, uh, that, that's I mean, I, I'm a deep believer that uh, we should be in a situation where the execution of our strategy is, is up to us. Mm. And uh, as much as possible, we, uh, we shield ourselves from the outside influences. And, you know, if you look at our performance in the last, uh, in the last several quarters, despite the broader uh, climate that we are operating in, uh, we have done well, and uh, that is a result of, of designing a strategy that is relevant to the times that we are working in, uh, and then having the courage and the teams to execute on that strategy. Mm -hmm. So this is what I have been focused on. So in terms of sectors that you believe show most promise and will continue to show promise and that you're excited about, BFSI, of course, has continued to do well yes. for you. Yeah. Uh, what else? BFSI, pharma, manufacturing, I think that we will see a, a rethink of manufacturing more local manufacturing, but also more advanced manufacturing. Uh, also governments and the effic more efficiency in governments. Um, more, more focus on, on agility, on faster trading, on being able to adapt to circumstances faster, more digital experiences, more remote uh, collaborative experiences and so forth. These are the things that uh, uh, I believe are, are important. Um, some of the industries will continue to face the, the disruption from digital. I mean, retail, obviously, is, is just going to intensify even more. Uh, but that also gives us an opportunity to redo the future of the store and, and things like I was talking to one of the large retailers here yesterday um, about this. So, so generally, I think that those industries are, uh, are looking good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as your margin picture is concerned, etc., in terms of specifics, I understand execution of strategy and innovation, but in terms of being able to exercise specific levers to ensure that given the outside volatility, yeah. you are able to, uh, to maintain that, I mean, what more can we So we have, uh, you know, uh, we have further strengthened that uh, with uh, Praveen running operations and now Ravi supporting him as deputy CEO. Uh, focus on utilization, on more agile hiring, um, not only ag agility in terms of numbers, but also in terms of skills. Uh, the focus that we have had on ensuring that many of our basic operational parameters are working well. Um, automation, the dramatic uh, adoption of automation. I mean, last quarter, we saved about 2,700 people worth of work because of automation. And I think la that has been a huge factor um, in holding a, a, getting us to both hold the margin steady uh, actually improve margin despite the fact that the top line is like what 400 basis points lower than what it was one year ago um, and uh, 
um, and also the ability to slow down the hiring in response to automation. So these are things that I feel really good about from an execution perspective, execution of operations. Uh, and in parallel to all of this, while maintaining the margin improvement, we are also improving our performance on the new businesses, mm. um, whether it is Mana or Skawa or Panaya or Edge, all four had their best quarter ever last quarter. Um, so I think that um, uh, in, in that broader sense, we are making, I'm very happy with the progress that we are making. Okay. We can always do, you know, we can always do more and you are never fully satisfied. But, uh, but if you just look at the circumstances around us, this is... This Again, is, I, I want to sort of pin you down to specific risks. One, of course, is what happens as far as the H-1B issue is concerned, where yes. there is still no clarity yeah. yet. Yeah. And there is speculation on how right. much the, the visa cost would go up by and so on and so forth. What kind of uh, terms and... So exactly. Forth, yeah. we, we don't know the fine print uh, yet. Uh, would that be the number one risk? Uh, facing the business today in the short term, in the near term? I, I think that the uh, supply chains of businesses, uh, uh, any uh, uh, improvement, any worsening of geopolitical uh, risks uh, around us. I mean, if you look at the, the Chinese president was here the day before yesterday and spoke about, uh, took his, um, made a very public uh, stance on, on uh, globalization and so forth. Um, so. The thing that I worry about, which are uh, which can have a bigger impact, are things like the disruption to the supply chains of large companies, um, and uh, as a result of any of these things becoming more serious, uh, also policy changes, obviously, uh, and so forth. So, you know, but that is, if you look at Y2K, right? I wasn't here at the time, uh, but Y2K ended up being a huge boost for our companies. The financial crisis of 2008 ended up being a big negative. You know, it is our job to deal with uncertainty uh, and, uh, and make the best out of it and, and so forth. So it's, uh, as we become, it doesn't help to be anxious about it, mm. it helps to be prepared. Mm. Uh, and as we learn more, uh, the key is to ensure that the organization is an agile one, it's an adaptive one. And this is what we work on both internally within Infosys, but also as a, uh, the work that we do with our customers uh, to help them become more agile and more responsive to what is happening around them. Um, I think that that is, um, as, a, as management, that is the, that's the best that we can do. Mm. So, you know, if, if I were to ask you to identify the three key risks that you are going to sort of brace yourselves for in 2017, what would those be? The, uh, the main, I mean, the policy risks, policy associated risks are obviously um, one thing that, that come to my mind. Uh, the, uh, a disruption in business of our clients um, um, because of whatever circumstances, whether it is uh, geopolitical policy changes or terrorism and things of this nature. Cybersecurity has become a large unknown uh, that we think about a lot. Um, and so these are the near term kinds of things. And then there is, of course, there's always currency and oil and um, almost all of these kinds of things. In India, I'm worried about water. Um, Already the water supply situation is, uh, is, is bad. If there is a bad monsoon, then we'll have a, you know, a really bad situation on our hands. All of us, not just yeah, yeah. Um, you know, as a country, we'll have a bad situation on our hands. So there are all those kinds of risks. But you know, this is, uh, this is why we are here. We have to manage ourselves in times of uncertainty. Mm. Now that you, of course, have to. But uh, uh, again, you know, just uh, to talk about perhaps the headlines that we could expect, whether it's from a point of view of acquisitions, it's the point of view of adding new capabilities. Uh, you know, what, do you today feel more confident at the start of 2017 than you did at the start of 2016 uh, in terms of deal conversion, conversations to conversion? Uh, you know, what is what does your gut tell you? The uh, no, in uh, the beginning of 2016, the business climate looked very positive. Uh, but uh, a lot of the near-term factors uh, showed up and had a big impact. As I sit here today, our connect with customers, uh, our relevance to clients has never been higher. And, and you have seen some of that, uh, uh, the kind of deep engagement that we now have with our clients. Uh, earlier today, we did a panel with Kathy Basan from Bank of America on the role of AI in, uh, in financial services. And yesterday, I did a Mark Weinberger from, from EY invited me to, to his uh, breakfast with 170 CXOs and, and so forth. So the level at which we connect with our clients and that our work is relevant to our clients has never been higher in my estimation. So the rest is execution and then the forces that impact our business. 
So I feel very comfortable with how our company is positioned for the times ahead. I want to accelerate the innovation. I want to accelerate the embrace of building new kinds of solutions and elevating the conversations to the CXO levels. And in that sense, I am still dissatisfied and we need to do more. Uh, but generally, we have never been more relevant to our clients. Mm. And um, beyond that, then the rest are factors that are not under your control. control. So you have to deal with them as best as you can. Well, we wish you the very best of luck as you go about dealing with some of those challenges and googlies that might come your way in 2017. <laughs> Vishal, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us, as Thanks. always, on CNBC TV. Thanks so much, Shireen.